Thank you for joining us for the services of Rutherford County Baptist Church here in Smyrna, Tennessee, led by Pastor Paul Chiscar. It is our prayer and our passion that souls will come to Christ and that they will grow in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus. We hope that the Lord will use these messages to strengthen you and your home in your walk with God. James chapter number one in God's Word, and we, for the month of May, preached on the attributes of God, and um, we're going to tag in here a Sunday in the month of June. I don't know what we'll do in the future. We'll see what the Lord says, but help me out. Let's review a little bit here. That first Sunday, we started preaching on the attributes of God. We preached on the mercy of the Lord endureth forever good, and then we preached God likes to be Close to you. That's amazing. So biblical, so true. He wants to be close to you. And um, then the week after, preached on God never changes. Never. Uh, not going to change for me or anybody else. And never changes. Then last week, preached on God is a master chef. And you say, what in the world is that about? You'll have to listen to last week's. You were sleeping last week, so you got to listen to it now online. And you can go to our church website and do that. But um, I'm going to preach for a little. I believe the Lord wants it to preach on God likes to give wisdom. Now we often hear, and it's true, God's omniscient. He knows everything. You've heard this statement. Has it ever occurred to you nothing's ever occurred to God? God's omniscient. He knows everything. But uh, even maybe a touch more specific, God likes to give wisdom. And we're going to start over here in James 1. The uh, verses preceding what we're going to read is talking about going through trials. But, um, but it does not just restrict it to that, but that is the context of it. And especially if you're going through trials, this is so pertinent to us. But James chapter number 1, we're going to start at verse number 5. Let's stand, if you would, please, as we read God's Word together. James 1, verse number 5 of God's Word. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, would you, would you read that last line with me out loud? Would you go, starting with and, here we go. And it shall be given him. That's amazing. And it shall. A promise. Guaranteed. Amen. And it shall be given him. Verse number six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. God likes to give wisdom. Let's go to the Lord over prayers we started this morning. Dear Father, Lord, um, read this week in your word how you said your kingdom is not in word but in power. Lord, the great need is your power. Lord, I do ask that your kingdom would come in power this morning. Father, you know, I, I cannot get across your truth like it needs to be gotten across without your power, your spirit. Lord, I humble myself. Forgive me, Lord, if I think I'm anything special. I know I'm not. I stand redeemed because of your son. That's my only hope, Lord. So, Lord, I ask for your spirit because of your son this morning. And Lord, I do pray that um, your spirit would come. And every person here, even the young people, all of them, Lord, would your spirit write on their heart your truths, specifically this truth, Lord. And, Father, we'll brag on you. We'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we ask and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Miss Mary Douthat for years, she um, told her I was going to talk about it a little bit this morning, but for years, she would bring candy and candy and candy 
to church. And um, our, our young folk of a church, they didn't know Miss Mary. They knew the candy lady. And she liked to give out candy. And in um, fact, it's, very, it's, it's a blessing to me. I feel like the Lord gave me confirmation. But I, she didn't know I was going to mention this morning. She brought up a, a note from a young person who grew up in her church that the young person wrote to her. And it had in there, thank you for the candy. And it had a picture of her big bag of candy, you know. And, um, and it was just her, her thing, and she loved it. All the kids come running. Who wouldn't love a bunch of kids running up to you, smiling? And Man, they'll treat you like gold if you got candy, amen, you know. And she gave out candy, candy, candy. It got to this point, literally, this is the truth. She would bring bags of candy in. They would just be sitting in her seat. You know, Baptists have their seat, you know. And she would just sit in her seat, and the kids would come get the candy. And she was glad to do it. She loved it, giving out candy. It made her day. And in fact, it got to the point where our church cleaners, said, man, all these candy wrappers. And out of the goodness of her heart and mercy on the church cleaners, because our church cleaners were using what hair was left. We won't say any names. I'm about to get in trouble here, you know. And, uh, and but out of her mercy, she said, all right, all right, I'll stop bringing candy because of the candy wrappers everywhere. But she just loved to give out candy. And God likes to give out wisdom. He is wisdom. He has all wisdom. The wisdom you need in your life. Young people, I think about you as you're growing up and, and you're in the next 10 years typically going to make the major decisions of your life. You're typically in the next 10 years. Now this is hard to imagine. But most of you are going to make the big decision of who you're going to marry. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine destiny being married? <laughs> Destiny says, why are you mentioning my name? Whoever it may be, typically now. I'm talking about the major decision. Typically, young people, you're going to decide. Young people, look up, look up. Everybody look up. There we go. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate you looking up. But, but typically, you're going to decide what kind of occupation you're going to have. For the rest of your life, often it's going to be determined in the next 10 years. I mean, wouldn't it be great, young people, to have some extra wisdom right now? And the wisdom you need for your life, God has it. The, the wisdom. Hey, seniors. I mean, someone said, they call these the golden years. I don't know if I'll call them golden or not, someone said, you know. Dad used to say old age is not for sissies, you know. <laughs> but the wisdom you need for those golden years, God has it. Young couples that are still forming your marriage and you're raising those little ones, those young years are so vital. The wisdom you need, God has it. Us middle age, I want to say us young folk, but I'm in church, amen. <laughs> but uh, 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 those in middle age, all the, the transition, kids growing up and letting kids go can be a tough thing. And, and new stages of life and, and seeing your children, they're not, they're not perfect children, none of them are, but you got to let them grow up in all these different facets and what are we going to do for retirement one day and all these different things. Hey, the wisdom you need for those, God has it all. And here's the wonderful thing about it, God likes to give wisdom. He likes it. I mean, he has the wisdom you need. He's got it. In fact, the promise, what an amazing promise right there, verse number five. Notice what he says there. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. That doesn't mean he's politically correct, okay? Don't go there. It means he gives it out plentifully. They give it to all men liberally and upbraid not. And what's that last line? Help me out with it. And it 
shall be given. God says, I, I give it out. Help me out. If you know it, don't raise your hand just because somebody else is going to yell it out, so you might as well yell it out. But besides Jesus Christ, who is the wisest man in the Bible? Solomon. Solomon. Remember, he asked for, for a wise and understanding heart is the way one book describes it. The way uh, 2 Chronicles 1.10 describes it. He said, hey, give me now wisdom. Remember, God appeared to him in that dream said, just what, what do you want? And, and according to that over in Chronicles, he said, give me now wisdom. Let me, let me tell you what God said in response. 1 Kings 3, verse number 10. And the speech pleased the Lord. Did you hear that? When he asked for wisdom, the Bible says, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. The Lord said, I'm so glad you came over and you wanted some candy. I, I, I got wisdom for you. He was pleased. He liked it. Somebody came and asked for wisdom. He said, James, you need some wisdom. He said, I'll give it to you. I promise. It shall be given. He likes to give out wisdom. Proverbs chapter number two, verse number six. For the Lord giveth wisdom. He doesn't sell it. He said, I'm going to give it to you. The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Did you notice that over in James chapter number 1, verse number 5? You're over there, James 1, 5. Let's look, read that verse again. Look, look at it again. What does it say about James 1, verse number 5? What does it say? If any of you, put your name in there. All right, let's read it out loud. Put your name in there. Here we go. If, you got your name in there. Lack wisdom. Let him ask of God to give it to all men liberally. And what's the, what's the next three words? And? Yeah, what does it mean there? He upbraideth not. You ever seen a parent and their child keeps asking, Mom, Dad, why this? And what about this? Children go through these stages. They start asking why. And you can handle that, but when they start asking why about the answer to the why. And then why about the why about the why about the why? You know what I mean? And it just goes on forever. And I understand, parents, at some point you got to say, hey, I ain't got time for all that. But on the other hand, can I say, be very careful with that. They're going to find out answers from somebody. Better off they learn from mom and dad than the backseat of the bus. But here's what it means. You ever see those parents? Man, I quit it. I don't know. Don't ask me. Leave me alone. God doesn't do that. When you come say, Lord, man, I, I need some wisdom. I like I, I, I need some wisdom. He upbraideth not. He doesn't say, get out of here. I ain't got time for you. The least little bitty thing God has time for you on. Wisdom. Wisdom. About the craziest things. About what to wear for the day, you know. I, I, he doesn't upbraid you. He doesn't say, well, well, Troy Cooper, I'm running the world here. I don't have time for that little bitty question there. He upbraideth not. I mean, he said, you, you know, when you go to God and say, Lord, what's going on here? Would you help me out? I, I need some wisdom about how to raise this child here. God doesn't say, well, you ought to know better already. He doesn't upbraid you. He says, come on over here, son, daughter. Let me give you the wisdom you need. He likes to give wisdom. When you come asking for wisdom, he doesn't upbraid you. Well, I can't believe you don't know the answer to that. By the way, what a wonderful message in the song about just humble ourselves. If any of you lack, too often we're not going to him and asking because we think we know. What a, what a wonderful way God starts it off with. He just says, if any, any of you lack. God likes to give out wisdom. I'm going to just go to him and say, Lord, I need some wisdom. God says, I guarantee you, I'm going to give it to you. Shall be given. That's what God says. Now, 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 the interesting thing, notice how God word, everything in God's word is there for a reason. No, look back over that verse, verse number five there. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. 
Here's what I find myself. I'm sure you don't do these things, but this is what I find myself doing. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to handle something. I need some wisdom. And so I rehash it about 2,475 times. Every angle I can, every little bitty thing about it. And God says, would you quit all that and start asking of God? I, you, I'm sure you never do this, but this is what I find myself doing. I, I find myself, maybe you wouldn't word it this way. I wouldn't word it this way, but I find myself worrying. How in the world can I do this? How is this going to happen? i got to figure this thing all out. Instead of asking God. So let him ask of God. It's a good day when I just realize I'm not going to get it all figured out. But God's got it all figured out. All I got to do is go ask. He likes to give wisdom. He's, a, he's like Miss Mary, if you will. He's got bags of wisdom. He knows it all. He knows the end from the beginning, he said. He's omniscient. I, um, I, I find myself just trying to figure it all out instead of asking. That's why I said just, just ask. By the way, I'm shocked at how liberal God is at giving wisdom when I just come to Him and ask in faith. Sometimes the littlest of prayers, not that I'm a great prayer warrior or not, but He's a great God. And he's so gracious when I just come and say, Lord, I, I need some wisdom. I, I thought about it when the Lord, uh, at the end of 2008, entering into 2009, and we, we have our vision bank. We used to have it at the end of the year, December, till we got wise enough. The Lord gave us enough wisdom to say, hey, bud, everybody's busy in December. Put it in January, you know. But, uh, but, but anyway, we had it in December, and we thought, Lord, we need some kind of great outreach and something out of the norm and and, um, and, and the Lord, he said, let me show you how to do that. And, uh, and he said, why don't you have, it's in every one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, why don't you have a feeding of the 5,000? And, um, and I said, Lord, I like wisdom. I mean, we, we, were, we were planning and we prepared to feed 5,000. We didn't feed 5,000, we fed over 1,000. 1,200, something, I don't know, I can't remember, I got it in my notes. So, Lord, I don't have wisdom for that. God said, I, I know you don't, buddy, but I do. I got bags, I got, I got wisdom for days, I, got, I mean wisdom for everything. I got wisdom how to handle this thing. Lord, we don't have the funding, we don't have the building, we don't have the, the manpower, we don't, have, we don't have it all together. God said, that's all right, you got, I, I got the wisdom. Just go ahead, you know what, you know what you're supposed to, you're supposed to step out on faith. God responds to faith. So December Vision Banquet, pastor stepped out and said, hey, we're going we're gonna to feed 5,000. Dude, what, what in the world? Somebody hit that preacher in the head, you know. How are you going to do it? I don't know. I ain't got the wisdom, but he got the wisdom. I didn't know. God knew. But right after the service ended, I thought, Baba's going to be coming up and say, Pastor, man, you know, you need to get a life. You need to get a brain, too, you know. But uh, Brother Stover came up and said, Pastor, I've been dreaming. I just had this thing in my head for years years. I want to feed a large amount of people. And like some kind of outreach thing where a lot of people get saved. I just, I just had this dream for years. I just, I just like to feed a lot of people some way. I never, I, I, I just had this thing, this desire in my heart. And the Lord said, see, I told you, you got the wisdom. And um, uh, brother, brother Stover and brother Schwanky, Tim Schwanky, man, they headed up our food. I wouldn't know how to cook food for five people, much less 5,000. God did. And I said, Lord, how are we going to house 5,000 people? We ain't got the facilities for 5,000. I don't have the wisdom there. And um, Lord, I need some wisdom. I said, man, I got, I got wisdom for days. And, and so what about that abandoned building over there? Anybody know where Bargain Hunt is? Yeah, here in Smyrna. Used to be an abandoned building. I said, Lord, what about that abandoned building? The Lord said, be a big dummy. I got wisdom there for you. 
And, um, and Lord enabled us, showed us how to find out who owned it. Food line did it at the time. And, and how to get to the right contact, the right person. And, um, and Christian people higher up in that company. Amen. And, um, and Lord, how are we going to do this thing? Lord said, I got wisdom for days. And the Lord gave us that building for a month free. Lord, yeah. about maintenance on it. Let me get you in contact with the right maintenance people at Food Line. They'll take care of it. And they did. I'm just talking about the wisdom. Lord, we don't have the funding for, to feed 5,000. We're not a thousand plus people in our church. We're just, you know, we're, we're a couple hundred, you know, in our church. How are we going to do this thing? And, 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 you know, the Lord gave us wisdom how to get the funding and the right people in the right context. We had people that didn't, didn't come to church much at all. They said, I won't get involved in that. Here's, I can't remember, it was three or $400 for that. We had companies say, hey, we'll help donate in that. We need a worker. Lord, how do we get workers for that? I had a, a couple that had came down from Michigan and the husband got saved in a church. They lived in Michigan. They said, we're going to travel down from Michigan just to be involved in that feeding of the 5,000. People from all over got involved in that and the art signs and how are we going to get this thing out? We need wisdom how to get it advertised. And, and, um, and, and somehow some TV station, I can't even remember how it all happened. Uh, so man, we want to get that. We had to travel up there and get interviewed on TV. The bad thing about it, they put powder on your face. I mean, that just, that ain't right, you know. <laughs> now, I don't know how to give interviews and all that stuff. Here's the good thing I didn't realize, it, but once one TV station interviews and does it on the news, typically all the other TV stations get involved. Now, I can't remember all five and 17 and all the different ones, Fox, all of them. Well, they want to interview it, you know. And, and, and the Lord got the word. By the way, we have people in our church today that seen some of those interviews and said, that, I used to go to that church where that pastor's at right there when they started out in the daycare over there. Let me get back in there. And their son's in heaven today because of that. And their husband sat beside him saved today because of that. I, I'm just saying, I didn't have the wisdom, but God does. Say, I don't have the wisdom, my financial situation, what to do about it all. God does. I don't know what to do about my health situation and, and what treatment and which way to go. God's got the wisdom. He, friend, He's got all the wisdom you need, young people, for the decisions you're going to make are so important. God's got the wisdom you need. Amen. And He likes to give it out. Wisdom for days. Oh, friend. He said, just come. Would you, would you read verse number 5 out loud with me, please? Verse number 5, James 1, verse number Let's read it out loud. I want you to think about it as we read it. Here we go. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be. Wow. Do you believe God lies? You believe God's word? He said it, give it to you. That's what he said. Now, let's keep going. What's the next verse? Next verse right there, verse number six. But let him ask in faith. Here's the right attitude. Well, he said it, give me the wisdom. I'm just going to believe. He's going to give me the, I'm going to ask. And I'm just going to believe it. Preacher, uh, someone went to him and said, Hey, preacher, what about this thing here? And the preacher said, Well, I want you to go pray about it for a while. And uh, so later on, the individual came back to the preacher and, and the preacher asking him about the situation. The preacher said, Did you pray about it? And they said, Yeah, but the Lord didn't do anything. I didn't think he would do anything. And the preacher said, That's why the Lord didn't do anything about it. Let him ask you in faith. Just say, you know, God said he's got the candy and the wisdom. And I just believe he's, he said he'd give it to you. I believe he's going to do it. Can I give a little personal testimony here? You're not here, I know. Y'all are, y'all are above this, but this is me. All right, I got problems galore. But uh, this is me. I, um, I, I wake up sometimes and I'll think, Lord, I, I want to be a, a good husband to that lady right there. She stuck with me for 25 years. Praise the Lord for that. And I, I want the wisdom to be a, a good husband to her and a husband of the ministry. And, all, and, I, and I want that. And, and then I think, Lord, I, I want the wisdom to be the dad my, my daughter and my son need. And, 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 I, and in 2018, you need a lot of wisdom with all those things. 
And if I'm not careful, the more I think about these things, the kind of heavier. And I think, Lord, um, and I'm not pastoring a big church. Many has a greater burden than me. But I, I think, Lord, man, I'm pastor of a church in 2018 and just coming up with three messages and some Sunday school lessons and other messages. Man, Lord, that's, I mean, that's just for years, you know I mean? And if, I find, if I'm not careful, I feel myself just kind of. And then the counseling. And the decisions, and I don't make them all right, and, but all the, all, all the different things going on all the time, and after a while, if I'm not careful, I mean, I'm just, and here's the thing, I don't ask in faith. And I don't have the wisdom I need on those days. What's a good day when I, I say, you know what? I'm choosing to believe, did you notice that I'm choosing to believe what God said? And God said, if I ask, He'll give me the wisdom. And I just go and I ask, Lord, I need wisdom about this thing. And I believe God's going to give me that. And it's amazing how God gives me the wisdom I need. Can I say this? Solomon did, did not get to be the wisest man by being intelligent and being such an IQ and figuring it all out. Solomon did not get to be the wisest man by that. Solomon got to be the wisest man by asking God for wisdom. Amen. And when I just say I'm going to ask in faith, it is amazing how God says, Paul, I've got, I've got so much more wisdom than you even need today. i got bags all over the place. And now you finally came in faith asking for it. God said, here's, I'll give it to you. He just kind of throws out hand. He's got wisdom. But when I come with that pity party. <laughs> you ever try to raise kids in 2018? Besides... You don't know what my kids are like. <laughs> Us preachers are good at it. Oh, I'm a pastor. Oh, it's horrible. God doesn't answer that. <laughs> God says, <laughs> what, what's the thing? What's the thing used to be? Uh, talk to the wrist because the hand's not home. Man, when I come and say, Lord, you said, I just believe that. It's amazing. God's got the wisdom for your situation. Here's what we think I'm unique. Nobody, nobody's going through what I'm going through. Don't think I'm talking about 200 people, think I'm talking about 150, whatever. We're all there. God's got the wisdom for your unique situation. When I go in faith, Lord, you said you'd give me the wisdom. I just believe you're going to do it. I ain't got it all figured out. I don't understand it all, but you, you said it. I believe it. And I just, and Lord, would you give me the wisdom? It's amazing. He gives it. Having wisdom isn't a matter of being the smartest. It's not a matter of having the most character. It's not a matter of figuring out every angle. It's a matter of asking. In faith. He's got it. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's look back at that verse number 6 right there. James 1. And look at that. But let him ask. Verse number 6. But let him ask in faith. Nothing. What's the next word? Nothing. Wavering. Wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. Not wavering. It just means kind of back and forth. Let me, let me put it in everyday shoe leather, all right? Uh, a, a, a parent goes, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do about my child? Now, I'm not saying every time this is the answer. Yet maybe spend time with them. Maybe other things. But sometimes God says, quit listening to everybody in our day and time and get the rottery proof. By the way, often God will even leads you. And by the way, the, the, the wisdom of God will never lead you against the Word of God. The Holy Spirit uses the sword, see. And He'll bring a verse up to you, like Proverbs 29, 15, The rod of reproof giveth wisdom, 
but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Okay? So God gives you wisdom in this thing. You ask in faith, God said, <laughs> I've seen about 7.2 billion, whatever it is, 7.5 billion people grow up. I know how to handle children. You know? And God said, let me give you the wisdom. Got it in my word already. You need to stop all the yelling and screaming. It, don't, don't go slapping them. Don't go getting mad and, and out of anger, hitting them upside the head or on the shoulder. Just quit all that. Send them to the room. Go back there in the proper way. Get, get the proper uh, whipping utensil. And in the proper place, in love, wear them out. You, you know what I mean there? It's going to be different for every child. But you're going to take care of business. Now, God gave you the wisdom, all right? You understand, God gave you the wisdom of how to handle that, all right? Here's what happens grandparents. <laughs> yeah. The ones that beat you half to death. But now, when you're whipping their grandchildren, hey, you think I ought to let up on them a little bit? And here's what happens. You start wavering. You, uh, you hear somebody at work say, well, I never got whipped and I turned out pretty good. The devil knows just right angle. And you start wavering. Come on. Apply that to your situation, whatever it may be. You read some book, you hear some philosophy out there, you, uh, you think, you, here's what the devil will do. Well, that child is not going to appreciate you and love you when they grow up. Come on now. By the way, that is so not true, but that's what the devil will tell you. And you start wavering. That's what he's talking about. But let him ask you in faith, nothing wavering. For he that is, that, that, that is like, like wavering, he's like a wind tossed. Now I notice the wind there. God, everything God says is worded like that for a reason. Y'all still on board here? Anybody sleepy? Look beside you if they're sleepy, poke them in the eyeball. But, 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 stick with me here. Here's, they're like a, a wave driven with the wind. Wind is an external circumstance. Something on the outside blows on you. There's gonna, it's gonna, here, here's what's going to happen. Now, now, here's what happens. You say, Lord, I, I, I just cannot keep my head above water. And I want to get, get my head above water a little bit more spiritually. I want to grow. I want to be victorious in my Christian life. And the Spirit of God says, hey, you need to be faithful to the house of God. You're a child of God. And the children of God need to go to the house of God. And he said, don't forsake that. And the Lord gave you wisdom. Come on now. Here's what's going to happen. If you have a young person in your house, there's a good chance at some point they're going to fight you over that one. I, I did at some points with my parents. I've told you about the day that, uh, that uh, the, the, the kids next door, the grandpa lived there, and every once in a while they would come over there, and they came over there, and I was just a... A junior age kid, and, and they, they, man, they're here. We want to play with him, and we didn't want to go to Sunday night church. Well, we knew there's no chance if I asked mom and dad, I mean, you get in trouble just for asking that there. We're going to be in church. And grandpa over there had that stuff. I'm not recommending this. I never dipped any of that stuff, but I did eat Copenhagen one time. <laughs> and I thought if I eat some of that stuff, I always heard you get sick. and sick I go to go to church and so I, I so I we went over there me and my brother and, and they them boys stole their grandpa's Copenhagen and I ate some, never dipped it in my life but I ate some of it and I didn't get sick <laughs> I'll never forget it man my brother picked me up on his shoulder spun me around I picked him up on my shoulder spun him around we're trying to get sick Really, it's the honest truth. 
We went to the pool. We weren't getting sick. We went to the pool. We got a pitcher out of the, you know, a pitcher. And we put noodles and ketchup and water. We made fake throw up. We had a plan now, man. And I thought dad's never going to buy this thing. We try it and he finds out he's going to kill us. We made it. We never used it. Amen. They would have called us, you know. You know what I ended up at Sunday night? Church. About halfway through church. Oh, it wasn't good, friend. <laughs> it's the truth. I didn't throw up, praise the Lord. The Lord's merciful, amen. His mercy endureth forever. <laughs> now, your child's going to do those things. It's going to be part of, and here's the thing. Are you going to be driven with the wind and tossed? Come on, is that what it says or not? He'll give wisdom, but they say, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to ask in faith, God, God told me what to do? I'm just going to do what God said. Are you going to waver? The circumstance is going to come. I thought about one of our men. What a, what a great testimony, and praise the Lord for this man of faith. But um, he, uh, he decided our spring soul winning campaign. The Lord had gave him some wisdom. You want to be used by God, be at soul winning every Saturday morning. By the way, but besides all that, go get some breakfast. Amen, you know. Amen. So I'm going to be there every Saturday. And uh, he's like all of us. We could use an extra buck. Somebody send me right there. And so about that time, his job said, we got plenty of overtime. You want some overtime, you can get it. And he had a, now God gave him clear leadership. What am I going to do now? Winds are blowing. And, uh, and he said, no, he said, I'm just, uh, the Lord spoke to me. I made a commitment to the Lord. I believe he's given me some wisdom here. I'm just going to go. And, 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 and God gave him some wisdom. And, uh, but the overtime came. He said, no, nope, I'm not going to work on Saturday. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out witness and tell people about Jesus. Didn't miss a Saturday. Towards the end, one of his daughters wanted to go to this special school. And a uh, very expensive she did not have a scholarship for it, and it's very expensive. And he, and he said, man, I haven't worked this overtime. <laughs> we ain't got the money, you know. But he did what he had in faith, followed the wisdom God gave him. And, um, and, and so he said, well, I was going. He said, I was going to take, he said, I believe I remember right, he said it's going to take about half of my paycheck to get her in there. And I think he, and I might be wrong, I, I don't know, but I think he gets paid twice a week, bi-weekly. But, um, but, but, he, but he went and he, he was going to make the payment, a lot of money, and he called to do it. And they said, all right, now who is this for? And he told them. And they said, oh, well, there's been a change. Some of the people that were before your daughter that had scholarships dropped out. And so we've given their full scholarship to your daughter. By the way, it was at the picnic uh, at Memorial Day. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I I'd like to help somebody in camp. You think it would be all right if I help so-and-so? And it was that man and his children. Send his children to camp. Now here's the thing I'm saying. Hey, he didn't waver. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. When, when Satan says, you don't have the wisdom to handle that situation that's been dropped in your lap. You say, hey, I'm not going to waver on that. God is going to give me the wisdom I need. Amen. Don't be wavering back and forth. Now last verse, we've got to hurry along. It's amazing. Look what he says, verse number 7. Verse number 7, for let not that man, the man that's been wavering, for let not that man think that he shall receive Anything. Wow. Anything of the Lord. You see, if you're going to go back and forth, don't even think. Let not that man think. See, because here's what you're going to think, and then you're going to think that God's word's not true. Not God's word's not true, but you've heard. By the way, it's not a matter of your feelings. Feelings are to, to waver and change are going to come. 
But, but, but you can just say, no, nope, this, is, this is what God's given me the wisdom. This is what I'm going to do. Not a matter of feelings, it's a matter of what you do. Romans, excuse me, Hebrews 11, 11, 1 tells us now, faith is the substance of things. It's substance of things hoped for. Pulpit substance. Three people just woke up, amen. Not necessarily just feelings, it's, it's what you do. The evidence of things not saying you can enter in court, it's some evidence, it's, it's what you did, not necessarily your feelings. You don't waver. So when I start wavering, I said, no. It's amazing for me when I start, can, can, I, can I tell you what happens with me? Let me just, a little, little, another little pity party I have. I know you never have them, but, that, but I, I'm confessing today, all right? Put your collars on backwards, amen. I'm going to confess to you. I'm joking there, all right? But, uh, but, but here, here's what I'll do. Uh, I'll say, hello, I need some wisdom. What do you want me to preach on? This is honest, this is honest truth. I, I go through this so often. And the Lord lead me towards the truth of verse. And I'll say, all right, Lord. And I'll go over and I'll study that verse out. And I say, Lord, I don't have the wisdom to preach on that thing. I don't even quite understand it myself really good, Lord. How can I spend three hours preaching on that truth? And I start wavering. And this is what I do. Lord, would you give me some wisdom? And I don't hear anything. And I'll start going through, maybe this, maybe this. And I'll look at old sermons. Maybe this, this, this. At that point, I don't receive anything. I'm just being honest with you. Lord, what about your promise? I've been wavering. I'm learning. I'm still, I, I'm, I'm learning. i got a long way to go. But I'm learning. Best thing to do. That initial little wisdom he gave me, just that little unction, that little thing just kind of boom and it's there and, and I brushed it off, better go back to that thing. And that verse that I told the Lord, I don't understand, I, I, I don't know how to preach it because I don't understand it fully myself. God gives me the wisdom I need and be honest with you, usually I get more out of it than you get out of it. But God gave me the wisdom to know what that verse meant, and how to preach and teach on it. But it was when I followed the original wisdom He gave me. But when I start wavering, I don't get anything else. And that's what He told me. So let not that man, the man that's been wavering, think, I hate to receive anything of the Lord. So what's the answer? Lord, this thing right in front of me, it's bigger than me, Lord. I'm an old country boy. I don't have the wisdom for that. I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I've got a son that's on drugs in jail in and out of it. My daughter, she's so much. I'm joking about that. I'm teasing. I, whatever it may be, Lord, this financial thing, I don't know how to handle it. My health, I don't know how to handle it. Whatever it may be. And, and, and you say, wait a second, wait a second. God said, bask in faith, he's got it. Someone said, instead of telling God how big your problems are, start telling your problems how big your God is. Say, Lord, you said you'd give me the wisdom. If I ask, I'm asking. It's amazing when God gives wisdom. I just say, all right, Lord gave it to me. We're going that way. It's amazing how much God says, yep. Let me give you some more. I give it out liberally. Want some more candy? Want some bags? He's got all the wisdom you need. And he likes to give it out. Would you read verse number 5 with me one more time? We're done. Verse number 5, James 1, 5. Here we go. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given. Let's bow our heads. Thank you once again for watching the service today. We hope that you were blessed by the message. Feel free to send us an email letting us know you stopped by or contact us on Facebook. We would love for you to join us in one of our weekly services so that we can meet you and your family in person. May God bless you.